It's Under Defeat, one of my favorite games for the Sega Dreamcast. Released in 2006 by G-Rev, a company that lives to make shooters, Under Defeat is an interesting medley of old-school shooter style and new-school graphics techniques. Well, they were new at the time. And I don't know if you can see here, but this disc is fairly well-worn. I, I played this a lot. I remember bringing it to Spring Break back when it came out when I was still in college. I played the hell out of it. I wouldn't describe it as manic, it's not the kind of game with a million bullets to avoid, um, but if you like older shoot 'em ups like Tiger Heli or something, or Twin Cobra, uh, you know, this is a game that you might really enjoy. So check it out, here's Under Defeat. To begin with, you can select two control styles, normal or reverse. And it'll make more sense in a second, but they control the direction you swivel when you move. This is one thing that sets Under Defeat apart from the majority of shooters. If you've played Zero Gunner 2, which I also recommend, um, you kind of know what to expect, although in that game you can swivel a full 360 degrees, in this you only swivel about 15 degrees at each side. And the game does a lot with these angles. There are bosses that you rotate by shooting them, and in order to cover enough of the screen, you really must be aiming. Your chopper in this game has a lot of firepower. In addition to the main gun, it has these weapons you can pick up, and they all have different attributes like uh, ease of use or reload time, and these are all trade-offs. So the weapon balance is pretty tight. Uh, each weapon has a purpose, uh, you never feel too overwhelmed, or that, um, you know, your weapon's overpowered. This game just has beautiful smoke and fire effects. Really good attention to detail. As you, know, you can see the smoke trails are altered by other debris around and rockets and whatnot. Man, your pilot is straight emo in this game. In this segment, you can see me using the cannon pod, which, you know, it's multiple shot unlike the rocket, so you don't have to aim as well. It'll automatically target enemies. Uh, but, you know, the rocket is really the best weapon in the game. If, if you're good with it, uh, you should really stick with it. Though, it's easier to score with a cannon, because the way the scoring works in this is that you get double the points for each enemy that you blow up using your option instead of your main guns. So to use a rocket effectively, you actually have to wound enemies and then launch a rocket into the middle of it. Uh, with a cannon, it actually does a lot of the work for you. But I, I think the best players um, use rocket anyway. There's plenty to dodge in this game, your hitbox is pretty small. But it's not a manic shoot 'em up by any stretch of the imagination. If you like Topan games or Raiden um, or Strikers, you'll feel right at home here. The game's music is spectacular. It was done by Shinji Hoso or Hosoi. I'm not, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, and he ha kind of has this trademark. Uh, fusion rock jazz style uh, with you know shredding guitars and, and lots of seventh chords and riffs and uh, it's just really neat to listen to and it goes very well with this kind of action. Stage 3, which you're looking at here, is really when all hell breaks loose and under defeat. I also like that it pauses when you die to show you what hit you. It actually doesn't do that in two-player mode, only single-player. A couple of the larger airplane mid-bosses or bosses 
have uh, a weak point of their engines. Uh, there's a really neat one later where if you take down, uh, you know, it's a four engine plane, and if you take down two of the engines on one side, it crashes. But if you only take down one engine on the left side and one engine on the right, it keeps flying. <laughs> one neat thing about this game, too, is that if you beat the game with continues or otherwise, with enough kills, it starts over at the beginning, but every level is flipped, the seasons are different, and the enemies are much more vicious. Between that and the scoring, this game has a fair amount of replay value. I think I logged somewhere around 70 hours or 80 hours playing Under Defeat. One thing I gotta mention that I'm not really a fan of is that they build these characters up as these kind of stoic, mopey badasses, and if you get to the second loop, you know, that's when you beat the game and it loops over. Uh, the character art between levels are your characters in swimsuits or, uh, you know, cuddling or whatever. And I don't normally mind when there's a little bit of skin in the game. Uh, but in the case of Under Defeat, it just seems kind of juvenile and um, unneeded. Uh, it seems kind of random. I mean, you also don't need sex to sell Under Defeat. I mean, this game is great. It looks great. Plays great. Um, that's for games that suck. Like Dead or Alive 2 or something. Anyway, Under Defeat isn't a long game. It only has five levels, although they are longer than your average shooter level. And if you've watched my reviews before, uh, you'll know that one thing I really like when games do this is, um, you know, that they're always introducing new concepts. This is the second to last level, and it's giving you all these new enemies, such as these rocket pods that launch lightning that slows down your chopper, and all kinds of other heavily armed enemies on rails. One thing I feel I always have to mention about shooters is, is that most shooters are about a half hour, 40 minutes, but every second of this game counts. Uh, they tend to be very hard, and the goal isn't to get to the end on a bunch of credits. The goal is to put one coin in the machine and beat the entire game with three lives. That may sound like a crazy feat, but it's actually pretty doable. Not that they make it easy on you. This is the uh, four-engine plane I was talking about earlier. So this is an officially licensed commercial release five years or so after the Dreamcast died. And you would think that they wouldn't put that much effort into the presentation, but in this game, you actually get a gallery, a practice mode, and it's and an arranged soundtrack. And all of these additions are not half-assed. I mean, they really went the extra mile when they developed this disc. You can see the practice mode here, which lets you select all kinds of stuff, including saving replays. And it's a godsend if you want to beat the game on one credit, because you can practice bosses and mid-bosses and get really good at those parts without playing the whole thing from start to finish each time. There's also Under Defeat HD, which I believe got a PS3 release in the United States, and it's also available for Xbox 360 in Japan. The big thing there is yet another soundtrack and a widescreen mode. Now, I'm told that the Dreamcast version still plays the best rendition of the arcade game, which is in a vertical presentation, so you want to turn your monitor on, the, on its side when you play it that you have the most screen space. Um, and if you, you know, don't want to do that, then the PS3 Xbox One is probably your better bet at this point. Though, to be honest, I have not played that version, so I can't really vouch for it a whole lot. But I do know that this release is excellent. The great thing about the Dreamcast is that the hardware is almost identical to the arcade hardware on which a lot of these games were developed. So when you get this version, you know that you're getting something very close to the actual arcade machine. Not only that, but it's 480p. Uh, and what that means is that it's actually not bad looking on HDTV uh, if you have a VGA box. 
Also, if you like this kind of stuff, by all means, pick up Under Defeat. It is completely and utterly, relentlessly badass.